Hello and welcome back. I'm Harish and in this channel I talk about building anything without coding and back in September 2021 we talked about or I created a course on tally.so which lets you create forms and send data from forms to anywhere you want essentially like Airtable or Notion or Google Sheets or Slack doesn't matter any platform that you want you can send the data that the users are submitting on your form and it's been a couple of years and a lot has changed in tally.so and here is the 2023 roundup of tally.so updated features and what are all the things that you can create using tally.so so let's get started and see what the updated features are uh, tally.so team has been kind enough to give me a free uh, pro account so that I can show you what the differences are between the free account and the pro account so that you can make an informed choice if you want to upgrade or use the free plan itself. See all the forms that we have uh, created before. I'm going to create a new form and show you the updated fields first. Let's start with the field updates which is first one is there is a ranking field now. If you click on plus, you get a ranking field, which is a new type of field they've added, which allows the users to actually rank the options in a specific order, right? If you have, if you, let's say uh, you have submissions from a competition and you want the judge to score the submissions in a specific order of their preference, or if you want the user to select certain order of preference of choices you give them, this is the perfect question. So let's say option one, option two, option three are three options that I add and if you do preview you can see that the user when they see the form can actually click and reorganize right see you can do so by using the ranking option and then there is randomization of answers right so let's say you have the same uh, options you can click on randomize options which means the options will appear differently every single time a new user opens the form uh, to submit their data right? or submit the information in the form. So if you want to randomize the options you can do so by uh, just enabling the option here. right? Now you can also add an image to the question. You can select an image or use unsplash. Just add an image to each of these options. Right. If you want to make it more uh, customized in terms of uh, or show cues to the user to help them select, you can add option images to each of these options. I think that's one uh, great feature. Moving on to the next feature, the file uploads block has received significant updates. Right. Earlier there was only file upload block just specifically, but some of the options they've added are if you click on the dots you get you can set maximum file size uh, you can also set multiple allowed file types you can select which of these uh, file types are allowed if you want to allow a bunch of audio files only to be submitted you can select all the types of audio files by selecting all audio files and that will only allow the user to update uh, audio files only you can also allow the user to upload multiple files which means the user can now upload more than one file. You can set how many minimum files are required. You can set them to two. You can also set the maximum files to 10. So the user is now minimally required to up upload two options, two files or a maximum of 10 files. I think that gives uh, a lot more flexibility in terms of what data you collect uh, based on your requirements. Now moving on to the third feature, feature update essentially is uh, in let's say you have a thank you page right if you insert a page and convert this uh, thank you page you can actually insert the user option user uh, if you do at the rate you can actually insert all of these and the user's responses also uh, you can just add the respondent id and the submission id so that you you show the user a reference to the id they can use to ask for any support in the future in case they don't hear from you or there are no updates about their submission or things like that you can always show them their submission id or the respondent id depending on what you want to show them uh, so that they can refer uh, that as a submission reference uh, to ask any questions in the future or um, based on your uh, form type you can use this feature right and now uh, moving on to the next feature which is progress bar now you get a progress bar that will show the user how much of the form is left 
right now back in the form editor i went to settings and this is where the progress bar is this is available for all free plans also so you can show the progress in the form when the user is filling now how will you see this if i go back to the editor and preview you see on the top there is a progress bar that's how you show the user the progress of how much uh, more of fields are left for them to submit next is another option that is available in the settings before that i'm going to click publish for now in the integrations the major update is to the integrations which means uh, you can do multiple integrations of the same type so let's say i want to send the data to two different notion databases or two different data table bases or two different google sheets in different google accounts you can do so now by just simply clicking on connect that will ask the user to log in into google and once i finish my login let me just quickly finish my login once i finish my login the form automatically creates first integration creates the default google sheet where the data will be sent to now once i click save changes now i can connect again another google sheet from another google account right i think this uh, gives a lot of privilege in terms of customizations um, some of the pro pro integrations that were added were google analytics facebook pixel apart from the ones that are already available were available through zapier before these are some of the updates to integrations especially the multiple integrations you can enable disable each of these integrations depending on uh, your form's requirements like if you want to stop sending data or if you if your form is closed you don't want this integration to ideally work so you can disable them or you can also see how much how many times the data has been sent when the data has been sent in case the integration isn't working the next update is back in the form so let's go back to the form another input type that was added is the multi select if you want the user to select multiple options you can do so now by adding multi select where you can add uh, let's say favorite color options right red or i can do blue orange yellow now when i save this form and preview i can select multiple options this field was not there before so this lets you add multi select where we will can select multiple options from the options you provided them moving on to the next feature is also another input field if you click on the plus you see a matrix matrix allows you to create a table like uh, input block where you can ask multiple questions i've used this to collect uh, uh, ratings for multiple questions on a scale of 1 to 5 this lets you customize that if i insert this you can add multiple columns right so i can do insert column to the right i can add as many columns as i want i can get let's say i i can do 1 2 3 4 5 and 5 this can be question 1 question 2 question 3 and i want the user to rate these on a scale of 1 to 5 i can do so now now if i click preview you can see the i can score this perfect for capturing ratings uh that's another type of field that was added input block that was added in the last couple of years moving on to next update is again an input field which is the signature field now you can collect user signatures in the form itself by adding the signature block pretty cool right moving on to the next one the next one is in the date picker there is a date picker there has been a date picker before uh, now the updated date picker lets you disable a few days if you click on the dots here you can disable days you can select which days to be disabled based on these options if you don't let's say you are creating a scheduler or a meeting scheduler where um, you can get input of which days the user is available or if you want to show your availability you can do so by disabling okay i don't want mondays uh to be available in the calendar for the user to select or you can do before date before this a certain date you don't want the user to select the dates you can do so you can also do after date you can specifically set a specific date range in which the options are only available uh that's also available now so that's the latest update of disabling specific days in the date field it's pretty cool uh that's i think a quick short round up of all the updated features in tally.so uh, tally.so is an amazing tool the link to sign up is in the description below click it 
try it out and you can embed these forms uh, anywhere you want be it a website or just a link that you want to send out in whatsapp you can do so without having to actually upgrade but if you want to upgrade and get more of these features uh, like integrating uh, google analytics right into the form or increasing the limit of the file upload size for the free plan it is 10 mb so if you want to increase the file upload limit you can do so by getting the pro plan but the choice is up to you you can make an informed choice now with that we come to the end of this video consider subscribing if you like the content and we'll see you in the next one peace